Guys, gals, it's Mike from Trolley Crossing Heating and Cooling. Uh, we got this new Well McLean GV90 Plus uh, 4 installed here in this home. It used to have an old crusty oil boiler. Um, oil tank was over here. Uh, we got all that removed and cleaned out, sealed the holes in the wall, and installed this new gas system. So we had propane brought to the house, and we piped from the other corner of the house over and over to here. Got it all inspected, permitted. Uh, or permit and inspected and uh, gas we set gas yesterday <coughs> so just want to go over a couple things so this is a direct vent boiler making it I think it's 91.9% .9 efficient on a good day uh, realistically it's probably closer to 90 um, venting goes up and out on a two pipe system um, gas comes in here on the side new gas cock everything has been leak tested um, so this is a four zone setup. So what we did is, here's our supply manifold that comes up. We do the water heater on the first supply, so that way it gets the first call, the first amount of hot water out of the boiler. It's good to put the water heater on the first one. And then your corresponding other three zones um, for the house. On your return side, water heater comes back on the first one. And these are your returns. This is set up with a nice system here. So you can shut this main valve and you can purge each system with only putting your hose on one time. You put your hose on here once, you can purge every single zone in this boiler. This boiler, according to the instructions, if you do a zone valve setup with these high efficiency sentry valves, um, you can use the boiler pump that's in here as your uh, system pump. So you don't have to have a circulator here. It can all be done through the boiler. Um, so down here, normally this would be on the supply, but according to the following the instructions normally my boilers I pipe all this stuff in the pump the water feed everything on the supply side and is there a pressure point into the expansion tank air elimination device and here's your water feed here so you put a shut up before and after so if we set things up for serviceability so if this component fails we can shut this shut this change it out and get the customer back up and running in half an hour um, that's how we pipe our system so you'll see there's main supply uh, valves um, stuff like that so this boiler is kind of like a primary secondary sort of heat exchanger so you've got this extra side canister on the side which grabs even more BTUs out of the boiler increasing its efficiency um, we control all our zones so we take all zone control um, so all the thermostats communicate to this including the water heater this is set up as priority. So we put the water heaters on zone four and we hit a switch inside so that when it calls for hot water, whether it's calling for heat or not, it prioritizes the hot water call. So if it could be heating or whatever, it'll shut actually the other zones down and it'll just focus all those BTUs to make sure that the customer has plenty of hot water uh, for those demands. As soon as the water heater satisfies, it turns all the zones back on. Um, your water heater, a cold water, cold water shut off here. Water main shut off, I guess, for hot water. Goes in, we got our expansion tank and vacuum relief. This is set to the house pressure. Uh, thermostatic mixing valve, so we can turn this tank up to about 130 degrees. We set this so it comes down no more than 120. So you're gaining about six gallons of hot water just by mixing it. Um, comes out and then you get a hot water shut off. So if you need to do any plumbing work, you can shut that off and that shuts off your hot water. Um, so here's part of your boiler loop here. Um, other than that, um, this is a, also a condensing boiler. So we need to have a pump down here, and this is going to pump out there. Anytime you have a high efficiency boiler, condensing boiler, you're going to have condensate. You got to remove that. It goes over to a laundry sink on the other side of the house. Um, so we also put in a GFI outlet so that so that pump, anything in a bay, any outlet in a basin has to be GFI. Power switch for the boiler, we capped off the old chimney. Um, we like to leave the manuals with the boiler, hopefully the customer does the same. Uh, so when we do have to come and provide any sort of service or maintenance, we know everything we need to know is right in this packet. Um, we also put in a sprinkler head too for just safety reasons. Uh, there's no drywall up above here. It's a gas boiler, so some inspectors want them, some don't, but we put them in anyway. Worst case they don't want it, we can plug it. Um, other than that, this is the overall installation. This is pretty typical installation for us. Um, 
put it up on blocks. Plenty of room for the clean outs. It's a nice clean install, very serviceable. Uh, the components that we use are electrically efficient. So there's efficient pumps inside of here, efficient zone valves. Um, so this boiler is also a cast iron block. So this boiler is going to last like probably like 30 years if it's maintained well. It's gonna, the block itself is gonna last a very long time. Um, so other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for taking the time to check out our video. And don't forget to like and subscribe uh, for future videos of installs, service calls, maintenance calls, um, and also some fun fishing stuff that we do over the, the season. Uh, thanks again. Have a great day. I just wanted to add to the video that we put these valve tags in on the valves for hot, cold gas supply, um, the boiler cold water feed. So they kind of marked off for what they do. So if the customer comes down and, you know, if they call us, let's say something happening, like, oh, shut off the water to the boiler, the hot water hink, they can, um, you know, know what does what. So it's just kind of a nice little thing for customers uh, to save them some confusion if there ever should be a need to do that.